Hi, this is Rick from Green Our Planet. Today we're in one of the school fruit orchards and I want to talk to you about fruit tree printing. So pruning, when do you do it? Well, for most trees, um, and deciduous trees, trees that lose their leaves in the wintertime, you want to prune in the wintertime when they're asleep. The only trees that are not pruned when they're deciduous are citrus trees, and they're pruned in the spring or early summer after fruit is set. So the first steps of pruning a tree are identifying the tree. You wanna find out the age of the tree, the type of tree, and where the fruit is produced. That's going to guide your next pruning steps. Some trees are pruned to more of an open center. Some trees are pruned taller, like you'd see most landscape trees. And some trees are pruned open shape, kind of a bush shape. If you're gonna prune fruit trees, you're going to need the right equipment. And what I have here is a pair of loppers. This is for larger cuts pair of bypass pruners. This will be for most cuts, most smaller cuts on the tree. Pruning saw for larger cuts. Alcohol for sanitizing your tools, either in between each cut or definitely in between each tree. And of course, gloves. You can wear heavier gloves, leather gloves, if you're working around a lot of thorns. I like lighter gloves because they're not as heavy. The first type of cuts you should be making on your fruit trees are the large structural or thinning cuts. These cuts are made using your loppers or your pruning saws and they help develop the structure of the tree and open up the tree for the smaller cuts which should come after this. So the next thing we're going to prune is the pomegranate and like apples, pomegranate forms spurs which are long lived and they form on newer wood growing from older growth. So you do want to prune your pomegranate to make it produce spurs. You want that fruit production to move up through the tree and once it's established, it's established for good. Now, you probably can notice this pomegranate's leaning over a little bit. I have taken the strapping off it is currently being tied up to correct its growth, so I want it straight up and down. Pomegranates are unusual in the fruit tree world. They're not really a tree, they're a bush. So we want to prune them as a bush. And basically all you wanna do is open up the center, trim these main branches to between three and five branches. But you also wanna remember that you occasionally want to renew the tree. So you do want newer branches growing if they're growing in the right spot. So even though they might not fit the three to five branches equally spaced around an open center, you do need to think about fruit that you're, or fruiting wood that you want to produce for the future. So for this one, we have a couple of older branches. They're already established with their fruit production. But at the same time, I have a lot of newer growth that's growing here on the outside that kind of complicates the pruning. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna open up the center, but I'm not going to remove this center growth because my outside growth isn't there yet and I don't wanna give up on fruit production. So normally, I would take this kind of growth out of the center. You wanna open it up. You want three to five branches growing around a central open area. And that's how you prune pomegranate. Top them a little bit to produce fruit production along these newer branches. You can see where the spurs grow up to a certain point and then they stop. This is all new growth. 
So we want to make sure that the fruit production is established in this newer growth before letting it grow even taller. So let's get to it. So earlier I talked about gloves. And I have on a pair of lightweight gloves so that my hands are comfortable and they breathe. But on a tree like pomegranate that is full of fairly nasty thorns, you really want those leather gloves that I talked about earlier. They're gonna protect your hand, wear long sleeves. This plant can really cause some damage if you allow it to. So when I'm pruning this plant, since I'm not taking the central growth out, I am gonna open it up. Basically that involves just cutting out any of this inner growth. The whole idea here, when you're cleaning out the center, is that you want a final plant that you can reach your hand in and harvest the fruit. But when it sets fruit, you don't wanna be fighting the tree to get it. So open up the centers, open up the lower part of the tree completely. Take all these little branches that you know can't support the weight of the fruit and if you're not developing them into fruiting branches like these, take them out. They're just in the way. They're never going to be able to support fruit, so why should they be in the way of another branch that can grow fruit? Got one major branch that I need to take out here. These will eventually turn into fruiting spurs along these main branches. These are just there to remind you that you should be wearing leather gloves. Taking away all of the lower growth. This is growth that's gonna get in the way when you're working on your irrigation, tending to your guild plants that are growing around your tree and you don't want fruit growing that low on the tree anyways. I have a nice salvia growing in here. I love these. They're really good for your garden and your bees. I talked earlier about forming new growth that's going to replace some of your older branches as they get a little bit um, bigger. Now these will continue producing. It's just that I wanna renew this plant from time to time to keep it like this, rather than old and woody like this. So back here, I have a brand new branch that's starting to come up. I'm gonna keep it because this is eventually going to replace this branch here, which in my opinion is branching way too low. I want it to be a little bit higher like these and have my fruit production up here so I don't have to stoop over and harvest. I want to be able to walk up to my tree, pick my fruit easily without getting stabbed by the spines, and you do all that with pruning. So we're going to leave that one, take away some more of this lower growth. It's in our way. Interfacing growth, because you want to be able to reach in, remember? We're gonna save that because that's growing outward. Because remember, the true orientation of this tree when it's wrapped up is like this. So all of this outward facing growth, we're gonna keep. We're gonna reduce this so that I can get more upward growth. And speaking of upward growth, Anything that's growing straight up and down on your branches, remove them. They take a lot of energy from your tree. Straight up and straight down are not really good for production on fruit trees. So always concentrate on anything growing straight down, anything growing straight up and remove it. Unless it works with your plan to have it. So when you think about how big a pomegranate is, 
fairly good size, about the size of an orange. You have to keep that in mind when you're looking at your fruiting branches. So make sure you have that space in between your branches. You don't want everything all clustered together. You want enough room to reach in and harvest. You can get these however tall you want. So if you want a really tall shade type bush, you can definitely grow it up that way. But remember, once you form the fruit production, the fruit spurs on these, they're long lived. So they'll always be fruit spurs. So start producing these lower ones early as you grow the plant up. Otherwise, all your fruit's going to be at the very top of the plant and you're gonna have to get on a ladder to harvest it. So this one is growing straight up and down, but I'm gonna save this because at some point in the future, I'm going to take this branch out because it's growing too far out. I want most of my growth to be upwards, slow arching upwards, and this is going to fill that position really nice. So I am going to cut this off in the future, maybe not this year, but definitely in the next season or two. Um, but I do want to get this angle fixed first before I make any final cuts that might interfere with production. And then everything that's left is our heading cuts. Now on pomegranates, you don't wanna to cut too much because you'll definitely interfere with the fruit production. So go light on them. You don't have to clean them all out. Leave it a little bit bushy like the plums. It won't hurt anything. They're natural bushes. As long as you can reach in there, just let them do what they're gonna do. But I do want to establish this growth here. So I'm just going to head the plant back. You can pick whatever random height you want. It doesn't matter. All of these heading cuts are to stimulate fruit production down here. I could cut this at any height I wanted. I'm choosing about, what is that? Four feet, five feet. And remember, I wanna keep this one, but I am going to tie it up. So in the meantime, let's do a heading cut on that. And that's about it. I'm not gonna go too deep. I'm not gonna clean it up too much. I want it bushy. I just wanna be able to reach in and grab it. I don't wanna remove too much of this fruiting wood. They generally don't need to be painted because they grow so thickly during their um, flowering and um, leafing out period. So I generally don't worry about painting a tree like pomegranate or a bush like pomegranate. Um, they're pretty sturdy. They grow like weeds, you just need to do a few simple things to keep them cleaned out and open. That's all they ask for. Hi, this is Rick from Green Our Planet. Thanks for watching.